Jeremiah Castile is back there with him along with Ken Toley. And here's the kickoff by Alan Duncan. And it goes to Coley, number 11 in the end zone. He will not return it. So Alabama will go to work with Don Jacobs out of Scottsboro at quarterback. Joe Jones, senior from Thomaston, Georgia. Major Ogilvy, a senior from Birmingham. Billy Jackson, a senior from Phoenix City. Keith Mark starting today for the first time at split in from Tuscaloosa. Alabama wearing white, Tennessee in the orange. And we're ready to go. The referee is R. Pete Williams. The umpire is Pete T. Williams. And here's the first play of the ball game. The wishbone set. Jacobs pulls the trigger. Fullback Jackson. Piled up after two yards. And here are the big guys up front. Joe Beasley, 245 tackle. Scott Allison, 241 guard. Steve Mott, center, 244 pounds. Vince Cowell, 231 pounds. Bob Kayavec, 226 pounds. And they tied in Bart Kraut, 225. Second down, eight. Alabama at their own 22. Second play of the game. Same set. Fullback. Took it out of his belly and turns the corner. Quarterback Jacobs, 181 pounds, six foot two inch senior who came off a severe knee operation, picks up 13 yards. Defensively, Castile, Wampler, Noonan, White, Morgan for Tennessee. Linebackers in secondary are Spratlin, Bolton, Jones, Martin, Gaines, and Bates, and the tied first down at the 35 yard line. People didn't think Don Jacobs would be able to play this season, but he fought his way through rehabilitation, and you just saw him. He's strong again. This time, back to throw. Has time to the sidelines. Pass to Major Ogilvy. Had it in his hands. Bounces out of his arms. Incomplete. Had him wide open. Well, Bear told me that he was going to try to pass the ball more and put the ball in the air, and of course, that would have only been the second reception for Major Ogilvy all year, and we're into the sixth game, which shows you that they've uh, been a little lacking in their passing game. I don't think the Bear wants Tennessee to get out to a big lead like they did in Birmingham last year, 17-0 before Alabama came back to win it, 27-17. It is second down and 10. This time, Jacobs gives to Jackson. Jackson running over the right side behind Cowell and Kayavec. Gets to the 40. Give him five. It'll be third down and five. One thing about the Alabama team, they have a whole bevy of running backs. Jackson played halfback last year and got him at fullback, and he really has had a good year thus far. six-man front. Right into the fullback. Jacobs keeps it. Can't turn the corner. Right there is number 61 and number 77. Bolton and Wampler. And it brings up a fourth down for the Tide. And in comes Woody Humphrey. The left-footed. I think the surprising thing in that series of downs is that uh, they did not break the bone. I'm talking about Alabama. They stayed in the same set. Flankers out. One split end and the rest of them all in full house. The kick is away by Humphrey. Willie Galt, another speedster from Griffin, Georgia. Back to the five, retreating to the two. Gets a hold, now it's shut. Door slammed on him at the five. Beautiful punt by Humphrey, 53 yards. And Tennessee starts deep in the hole with Steve Alatori at quarterback. He's out of Cypress, California. Terry Daniels is the tailback, 180-pounder. James Berry is out of Mississippi at fullback. Anthony Hancock, the young man we showed you to, is really a burner. Mike Miller is another track man for Tennessee. So they've got three speedsters. Miller, Galt, and Hancock, all track people, on the starting unit. It is Hancock going wide to the left side, out of the eye. From the five, first down, Ball Zalatori gives the ball off to the tailback. And the game is three yards. 
Anthony Hancock won way out of the picture. Terry Daniels carried the ball there. Running behind Jay Williams, 265-pound tackle. Marin is a 254-pound guard. Lee North, a 250-pound senior. Dwight Wilson, a 235-pound guard. Tim Irwin from Knoxville, 265 at tackle. And the tight end, Reggie Harper, finally getting healthy at 227. Second down and seven. The ball is handed off to the fullback this time. Not much for James Berry. Junior out of Natchez, Mississippi, runs into Warren Lyles, the nose guard. On each side of him, you have De Niro, Braggs, Klein, and E.J. Jr. The linebackers are Randy Scott and Thomas Boyd. The secondary, Clements, Castile, Wilcox, and Tucker. There's Woody Humphrey, who just nailed his punt 53 yards to put Tennessee in the hole. The football is sitting at the 10-yard line. It is third down and five for the balls, and it's a tough place to start from, isn't it? Thank you. It really is, field position-wise. And the other thing that Johnny Majors told me yesterday, he said the Alabama defense is an offensive defense. And I said, what do you mean by that? He says they attack on the snap of the ball, just like you would offensively. And this has been the strong suit, certainly, of the Alabama teams over the years. The delay in the game for the moment is at the charge of the officials. Let me... Uh, one knee, fella. Third and five for the balls from their own ten. That's the tailback. And Daniels, on a penalty flag at the ten-yard line, is chopped right there by Randy Scott, number 50, the linebacker. Terry Daniels carrying. We have an illegal procedure against the orange team. Too many people in the backfield. Thank you, Pete. And I'm sure Alabama will say, all right, guys, kick it to us. We want it. Well, what they wound up, they went into an unbalanced line. They were overloaded to the wide side of the field. And uh, apparently they did not line up on the line of scrimmage, the wide out. Warren averaging just under 40 yards per punt. In the warm-up today, we noticed he has high hanging kick. And he's got it up there again. It's a spinner. It's a dandy. Ogilvy all the way back to the 42. A lot of orange shirts to greet him. Down at the 41. 48-yard punt. So we've seen two punts. One for 53 by Humphrey. And Warren answers with a 48-yard howitzer. And we've got a timeout. My mama says, too. <laughs> <laughs> well, they know you're here. I'll say that. <laughs> That's just one of nine million things I've never done. I ought to be entitled to try it once. John Warren, you can see there, you're giving him 49 yards on the punt. And they gave um, Woody Humphrey 54 yards on his kick. So officially, they're a yard longer than what we call. The football is sitting at the 41 now, with Alabama in possession, first down, no score, in the opening quarter of this whole long-running rivalry. With 11 minutes and 46 seconds to play in the first quarter, Lenny Patrick has now come in at the left halfback spot. The fresh halfback, Joe Jones, has had it 31 times, and Lenny Patrick's had it 25. They do a great balance, which makes for great team play, I think. Jackson and Ogilvy are in there now with Patrick from the 41. Reflects the tight end out wide. Ride it off to the fullback. Jacobs takes it out of his belly, keeps it, turns up field. He's taken down by Chris Bolton, a senior from Atlanta for Tennessee. And Jacobs now has carried three times for 21 yards. This game to the 47, give him six on the carry. Be one of the key things uh, as we watch the Tennessee defense, they've lost both of their starting ends. They have to go with a freshman in Charles Morgan, number 83, and a sophomore at the other end, and they're inexperienced. Second down four. Again, Bart Kropp shifts out wide, the tight end. This time, they leave it in the fullback's arms, and Jackson is across midfield, and for the first time, Alabama's walking in Tennessee country. Jim Noonan, middle guard, made the tackle. They call him, Era, the Tasmanian Devil. Well, I tell you, he is quick, and he's had a great year. Here he is warding off the blockers, hanging right onto Jackson, and again, it tells you how good Jackson is. Jackson's a fine runner. We'll see more of Noonan this afternoon. Jesse Bendross, 88, in the ball game at wide receiver, replacing Marks. Ball at midfield. Third down, a yard. Jackson for the first down to the Tennessee 48. On the play, Joe Beasley laying the block in there. Number 83 made the tackle. Yep. Charles Morgan for the Volunteers. 
Change being moved. Well, for the first down. Thus far, Alabama is doing what they've done best all year, and that's to run the football. Marks 82 back in at wide receiver. Jacobs to throw it. Gets his pass off. Going deep. Incomplete. Pass intended for Marks. And Don Jacobs was put on the seat of his britches by Jim Noonan, the middle guard, number 60. He was coming like a truck. He said he can run a 4 6 40. He can really fly. He's not tall, 5'11, 234. He is being blocked. He sheds him with the use of his arms. Here he comes on the pass. Look at him move. 4 6 40 is what he can fly. Oh, yes, he gets the Jacobs just as he releases. Second down and 10. Alabama at the Tennessee 48. They jump into a six man front. Jacobs, reverse pivot. Ball slapped loose. It's loose on the ground. Number 58 for Alabama drives. Tennessee gets it. Chris Bolton beat him to it. Lee Fox saw the ball loose. Couldn't get there. Charles Morgan, 83, the man that got into the backfield and slapped it loose. Big play. Well, just a freshman. Reverse pivot with fullback motion. He comes down the line on a true option. Morgan comes around, hits it with his right arm. Morgan, 6'2 and a half, 225. Big turnover. Looks like Chris Bolton, 61, in on the recovery. And uh, Steve Mott almost got there for Alabama, their center. Tennessee is in business. Alabama, 39-yard line. First turnover of the ball game. Let's see if the balls can cash it in. Back to throw. Alatore goes deep. He's got Hancock. He can't hold it. He got behind Jeremiah Castillo. He was there. Put it right in his arms, and Hancock can flat out fly. It's a big break for Alabama on it. They had a touchdown there. Second down and 10. There's Mr. Morgan, who made the play for Tennessee. Cooper, the tight end who had been starting, damaged his knee against Georgia Tech. Not able to play today. Second and 10. Alatori to throw it, getting some pressure, whips it, intended for Hancock. He was covered like a blanket, Castile all over him. Also over there was Ricky Tucker. He threw it in the ground. It'll be third and ten. Notre Dame at halftime over Army, 17 to nothing. Georgia crushed to Vanderbilt, 41 to nothing. The Bulldogs roll along. North Carolina rolls along undefeated, beating NC State. Ohio State in the fourth quarter beating Indiana by 17, and we'll have highlights of that one for you at halftime on the Fireman's Fund flashback. Nebraska over Oklahoma State in the second quarter. All right, the ball stay in the air on third down. Pressure looped up, incomplete. Pass intended for 34. Berry coming out of the backfield. De Niro, 51, penetrating for Alabama. Made Alatori unloaded. And while the teams change position now and get ready for the punt, I'd like to say this in behalf of all of us at ABC Sports, Barbara Dooley, Vince Dooley, the head coach at Georgia, his wife injured severely in an automobile accident when they were coming back from watching their young son play football the other day. We do hope she recovers well and is soon back on the sidelines where she truly enjoys rooting for her husband's Bulldogs. The putt now by John Warren. Penalty flag on the field. He's trying to knuckleball it down there, but it's dragging its tail and kicks through the end zone. But let's see about the penalty. That'll go for a 39-yard punt. He's a very good place kicker. And Tennessee is a beneficiary of a big field position change. And the pass that Hancock couldn't hold in the end zone. But now here's the tide, ready to attack again as they break the bone for the first time. Jacobs follows Jackson outside to Patrick, slides down at the 21. Wilbert Jones from Brownsville, Tennessee, was out there forcing on the play, helped by Chris Bolton, 61. We've got 9-10 to play in the first quarter. At its second down, nine with a crowd. Tickets sold, including standing room, 96,748 which is the largest crowd ever to see a football game in the South. Crowd flex is out. Both teams have already gone deep. Jacobs keeps it tight to Jackson, almost pops out. Almost popped out of there. 
but Noonan fights off the blocking and slowed him down. Well, you can't. You've got to double on a man with, of his ability. Let's take a look here. He's playing right over the center's nose. They work on him on a double team, but the right guard rakes on through releases, thinking the center has got him. Steve Mott. It's a technique that is used often in college football. Third down, a yard and a half. Keeps it, gets the first down, gets in the open. And he's obviously got a first down as he runs all the way to the Tennessee 43-yard line. Picks up 28 yards. Danny Spradlin, 50, linebacker, ran him down. See, that didn't look like the same fellow that was on crutches down at the Sugar Bowl last year. No, Here didn't. he is on the true, what they call the load option off the wishbone. And he gets into the secondary here. And, of course, looking at him here, it looks like his knee has come along very nicely. He's handled the ball club well. It's a big gainer for Alabama. Mark it to 44. First down tied, Tennessee 44. Noonan jumping around has slid away from the center now. Play goes the other way, away from him. Jackson the pull back to about the 40. That's a good offensive surge on the right side. It really was. You see, Jackson uh, should have been stopped at the line of scrimmage, but a combination of the line blockers continuing to sustain their blocks, and Jackson pumping his leg. Pick up three yards. Three and a half. Uh, look at that. The Blue yeah, Devils uh, of Duke have upset Clemson 34-17. We'll have a nice day now. Our producer will be very happy. <laughs> well, they've been threatening all year. Joey Jones, a speedster in at wide receiver, but the play goes away from him. Jacob, the quarterback, keeps it. He gets down to about the 36, and again, it is Noonan for Tennessee to make the defensive play. Other scores, third quarter out of the Big Ten, Purdue, and Baylor over A&M in the second quarter. Bears are undefeated in the Southwest Conference. And Michigan at halftime, 16 points over Minnesota. And Oklahoma rolling this week. Hopefully making fewer mistakes. Florida over Ole Miss at halftime. Third down, they need about three. That's contact. Chris Bolton, linebacker, had stepped into the line trying to anticipate the count. Makes contact, encroachment, five yards. It'll be first down, Alabama. Just a good change of cadence on the part of the... Court illegal Jacobs. procedure against the defense. Take a look right here. You can't hear the voice, of course, but he's reacting to sound rather than the ball. He must move on the ball. And he makes the mistake of jumping across. So Alabama sits just outside the Tennessee 31 first down with six minutes and 10 seconds to play in the first quarter. Five-man defensive front for Tennessee. They hand the ball off to Major Ogilvy. And Ogilvy runs it to the 25. Greg Gaines, senior from Nashville, makes the stop. They've created more formation distortion on this drive. Fullback motion, they're using different formations, unbalanced, and uh, creating the defensive confusion that they want to. We can see the big difference in the rushing here, and we have, what, 6 five, 35 left to go in the first quarter. The ball is just short of the 25. Ogilvy got six, second down, four. First man, fullback, Jackson. Billy's at 214 this season. They've marked him at the 23. It'll be third and one. When you look at the stats there, you see that they've been running on an average of 364 yards a game. It seems that that's what they're going to do in this ball game. They're going to run it. Lamont Hope Jeffers in at linebacker. Number 47. Ogilvy. Out at the 20 by Jeffers, but Major Ogilvy's strength takes him to the 19, and that's an Alabama first down. They're grinding it out. Next week, an NCAA college doubleheader. Games have not been selected as yet. We'll wait until the decisions are in from today. 
Check your local listing for the time and the game in your area starting at noon Eastern time. At the 19 of Tennessee, first down, Bama. Jacobs to throw it. Incomplete pass intended for Ben Dross. Hollywood, Florida youngster. It was not a particularly good pass. Well, it's tough to move to your left, and he didn't have that much sideline there. The timing was off. Ball was late, and the receiver turned too early. Iowa State also undefeated. Cyclones leading Kansas. And Virginia Tech beating Virginia. This is the ninth play in this procession for Alabama. They started back on their own 20. No score. Second and 10 for the 19. Jacobs, the quarterback, to the 16. And down he goes in the arms of Chris Wumpler. A 230-pound sophomore tackle from Lenore City, Tennessee. Jacobs, seven carries, 48 yards now. This one gets tough down in here. Big down. Joe Jones back in at left half for Alabama. Lenny Patrick is out. Ben Gross wide left. <laughs> Movement along the line. Looked like the offensive line. Joe Beasley tackled 70, moved before the snap. Tennessee man reached across, snapped him on the helmet. That brought the flags with the movement. Here's the decision. Lenny Patrick back in. Third down, 12 from the 21 of Tennessee. Six-man defensive front, Jacobs back to throw. Pressure's on, pass away, thrown short to Patrick, down he goes. At the 14-yard line, and Charles Morgan, 83, right there. It was Morgan that made the big play, causing the turnover. Well, you see what that five-yard penalty did, had they not... Beasley not made the motion. It looks like they would have been a close to a first down. It brings up a fourth down. It brings up, obviously, the field goal team. 31-yard attempt. Kim, Peter Kim, out of Honolulu. His kick is up. His kick is good. 31-yard field goal by Peter Finn. He is now... Eight out of ten on the season, and Alabama in field goals from Hawaii. He wanted to play football at Alabama. Walked in and said, Coach, I'm pretty good. You want to try me? They did, and they found out he was. And he just nailed that kickoff. Galt way in the back of the end zone. And Tennessee will have it first down at the 20. Willie with no chance on that one. High hanger. Georgia Tech and Auburn are 7-7. Florida State a week ago. You can see that Alabama has dominated the early going offensively holding the football we've got 249 to play in the first quarter Alatori is still in the halfback All right, quarterback hands off out of the split set to the left side halfback Terry Daniels and he runs into Byron Braggs a 270 pound defensive tackle out of Montgomery well the um, Tennessee attack has been pretty well balanced and 190 yards rushing 148 yards passing and I think they're going to have to put it up in the air to beat this ball club. Daniels just short of five on the carry. Call it second down and six. There's a yard gain. No more. The Alabama defense getting to Daniels as he reached the 25, fell forward to the 26. The linebacker, Scott, and E.J. Jr., the defensive end. Alabama's defensive pattern on passing downs has been set. The previous uh, possession by Tennessee, they put three out of the four times let's see whether they do it again here Steve Alatori rolls it out runs away from the linebacker keeps it trying to get his first down can't do it Thomas Boyd from Huntsville put the pressure on him down he went and so it's kicking time for John Warren watch the play here on EJ Jr. He lines up as a linebacker and comes from the right end position and comes to the inside and blitzes there he is, right here. He is a good football player. The punt by Warren. Penalty flag down. Not a particularly good kick. There was pressure. Major Ogilvy feels it. And Major is down 
at about the 25 26 yard line. 106 to play in the first quarter. We've got a light rain falling with the bounce. That was a 55 yard punt. Plus procedure against Tennessee. Alabama would prefer to have them punt it again after the roll. It wound up a 55 yarder. You can see the rain tumbling down. The sun is almost shining. But not They'll do it again. The snap coming from the 23. And looks like Alabama may be going. They've got 10 people up there. They peel off now. And the kick is away by Warren. Ogilvy calls a fair catch. And it's a much better arrangement for Alabama. The football is out at the 39-yard line. That was a 39-yard punt versus the 55-yarder a moment ago. Quarterback now is Ken Coley, number 11. Mark Nix, 48. Charlie Williams, 38. And Ken Simon, 20. The backfield for the tie. Coley keeps it. Now goes outside with it. Nothing. Oh, what a hit at the 40-yard line by Wilbert Jones on Ken Simon. He just saw the perfect way to defense the wishbone option. Fullback, the quarterback, and then a terrific hit in what looked like might be a successful play. Came up with a, maybe a half yard to a yard gain. Great piece of defensive work. Sam the sophomore from Montgomery. Second down, nine at the 40. Fumble the staff. Alabama keeps it. Coley diving in there when he realized he didn't have a handle. First quarter's over. After one in Knoxville before more than 96,000, Alabama leads Tennessee three to nothing. Stadium, Alabama owns the football. Third down and nine at the 39-yard line. Don Jacobs is back at quarterback. The second unit line pretty much in for Alabama. This figures to be a passing down with Jacobs in there. He's still got it. He's going to turn it upfield and run it. He's got a first down. So Don Jacobs executing the option brilliantly turns it across midfield to the Tennessee 47. Bill Bates makes the tackle. The numbers for the first quarter read this way. Well, you can see the dominance of Alabama. No first downs for Tennessee. Total yardage 92 to 11. And you can see that Tennessee did not have the football. They only had it three minutes and 36 seconds. 11.24 for Alabama, doing the thing that they do best, grinding it out. Jacobs now with 62 yards. Running. Uh -oh. Pressure from the blind side. Morgan flattens the Alabama quarterback. And three big plays for the freshman Charles Morgan. Nobody picked him up from the back side. It was a run-action pass to the to the right. Morgan came clean from the backside, and uh, Jacobs could have gotten a real shot and an injury from that kind of a hit. James Mallard, the sprinter, was on a fly pattern to the corner, and he was there. But Jacobs had no chance. Mallard out, Vendross in. That's split in now. Vendross is 88. Second down from the Alabama 45. Second down and 17. Probably too much time. Delay, white team. A fullback, Jack uh, Williams, Charlie Williams, 217 pound sophomore out of Bessemer. He moved from the 40 to the 43. <laughs> Alabama carries out their fake so well downfield by the deceptive ones why Mike Castile the left end wasn't sure where the ball was. Time, Alabama. Young fellow who's hobbled. We appreciate the insignia. He's slapped on his knee though, don't we? Three nothing. Alabama leading. And they're looking now at third down at about 19 with Walter Lewis, a freshman out of Bruton, Alabama. In at quarterback, they go out of a punt formation, and the pass over the middle is completed to Keith Marks. So they go out of a short punt formation, 
and throw the ball over the middle and what was it you said about wrinkles era <laughs> i'll tell you he comes up with them not only that but he he does them successfully keith marks just goes right down gets in the seam between the linebackers in front of the deep defenders and cradles the ball and gets a first down on third and 22 was it third and 19. 19. picked up 23 yards on the play well I'll say Mr. Lewis did his job. Jacobs comes back in now, running the offense, hands it off to the halfback Joe Jones, and Jones goes from the Tennessee 34 to the Volunteer 29. That's five. It doesn't look like five, the way they run this wishbone. You know, there's a mass of people, and all of a sudden you get up, and it's five yards. That's exactly right. They just keep driving you off the line of scrimmage. The deception in the backfield is good, and it holds the defense. Uh -oh. Fumble, Jacobs dropped it, covers it. Lost about a half a yard on that drop. Well, all we got to do is say something good about him, and the next thing you know, they fumble the football. That's three times they've dropped it, lost it once. The other the one they lost wasn't dropped. It was slapped out of the air by Morgan. And a great defensive play. Ken Coley back in at quarterback. And the Bears using him. Joey Jones in his wide receiver. Coley can't get around the corner. That's a good defensive play by Danny Spradlin, linebacker for the Volunteers. And that'll bring up a fourth down. And it brings up a field goal situation again for Alabama. Humphrey will hold for Peter Kim. This is a 47-yarder. His first one was good from 31 yards. It is perfect. 47-yard field goal by Peter Kim, plus his 31-yard field goal in the first quarter. Six seconds so far. Kim will kick off. Willie Galt is the deep man for Tennessee. And it is Tim Clark doing the kicking for Alabama. He's got the ball in the end zone. Deep, no return by the balls. They haven't had a chance to run it back yet. Down passes of 53-25 and 50. Pitt winning it 42-14. to so Ricker has a big day for Pittsburgh. Here's Steve Alatori, at quarterback for Tennessee, trying to find somebody to throw the ball to. Couldn't find an orange shirt open. Turns it upfield and picks up about three. Steve Alatori, who came from California out of Cyprus, and his family is here to watch him play. Now, commuting from California to Tennessee to watch Tennessee play football, is a rather expensive bit of cheerleading. They've done it every week so far. Second down, call it seven from the 23. Alatori off the snap quickly. Has rather decent protection, and then the penetration, and he's flushed out of the pocket by Warren Lyles, number 91, the big junior from Pinson Valley, Alabama. You can't discount the Tennessee team because they've got such wide out speed. If anybody ever gets open, look out because they've got world class spinners, spinners out there. The first down story reflected there. The Volunteers yet to get one. Their possession so far, three times they've had it three plays and then punted. Third and six. Alatori is all is loose. And it's Alabama's football. Benny Perrin, number 23, a junior from Decatur, came blistering in, and he jarred the ball loose from Steve Alatori. Jarred Steve thoroughly in the process. And here's Alabama with the turnover, first down at the Tennessee 15. As I said, they set the pattern early. Look at them blitzing in here. Tennessee does not pick it up. And of course, you see from the back, this is the toughest kind of shot right there. Shakes the ball loose from him. And tennis, uh, Alabama recovers it. And a big opportunity for the tie, leading six to nothing with Jacobs at quarterback. He's been the offensive star so far for Alabama. Gives it to the second man, Ogilvy. He goes for two, maybe three. 
Noonan's over there again. Ball is in between the 12 and 13 yard hash marks. Jacobs now 10 carries 53 yards. Jackson 7 carries 26 yards. The leading ground gainers for Alabama. Probably checked off. Jacobs keeps gets to the 10. There he runs into Lamont Hope Jeffers. 189 pound linebacker give up a little bit of weight at that position to get this quickness and speed see many of their plays have been directed to the short side of the field because Tennessee is overloading the wide side forcing them back where there isn't much room to run but still they've been uh, consistent enough to maintain possession of the ball control the clock and they're knocking they've converted five out of six times on third down third and five Pretty noisy down at that end of the stadium. Nayland Stadium is now a complete bowl time official. Really a referee position there. Jacobs flips it out. Joe Jones turns it up for the seven. He's two yards short of the first down. Chris Wampler, 77, the tackle for Tennessee. Decision making time. Fourth down and uh, maybe just a shade over a yard, Keith. No, it's pretty close to two. Yep. Now they've called time. Jacobs will go to the sidelines. I say apparently. There goes you never know. Well, that's right. <laughs> Woody Humphrey, the punter, holds. He'll kick it. He hits the club upright. He hit the upright and it kicked out. Oh, that gets a growl. And at quarterback now for Alabama, a junior from Parma, Ohio. His first appearance in the game. Oshevsky gets his pass off. Intended for Hancock. It is incomplete. And Chris Bolton, or was it Mike Pitts, defensive end? Mike Pitts, 81 came in and gives Jeff Oshevsky a little taste of what it's like to play against Alabama. Oshevsky, a junior, as we told you, and also mentioned the fact his first appearance in the game and the numbers for him on the season. Well, he's a 66% passer. Primarily a drop back. Second down and 10 from the 20. Gives the ball off on the reverse to Hancock. Hancock cannot get around the corner. Good defensive play by the sophomore from Baltimore, Mike Pitts. So Mike Pitts has made two plays in a row here for Alabama's defense. Here's Bill. Well, the Georgia Bulldogs still remain undefeated, and they got a great performance today by their sensational freshman back, Herschel Walker. Just look at that. Setting a new single-game record for 283 yards and touchdown runs all over the place. He's something. Well, he must be. Second down nine from the 21 for Tennessee. Yet to get a first down in the ball game. Oshevsky rolls it out. And the tide rolls him out at the 18. And Mike Pitts again. He comes into the ball game, number 81, and he goes bang, bang, bang. Three in a row. I'll tell you, the Alabama defense is really impressive. Played an outstanding. Well, we're into the 6 20 left to go in the second quarter, and they really have played put heat on the passer. They've defended the run well. Warren in the front on fourth down, standing back inside his five, should hit it about the seven. Coley is deep for Alabama. That low board after it, but he gets it away, and it is a dandy. Whoa, all the way back to the 25. And Coley is run down at the 41. That was a 57-yard punt by John Warren. Great kicking today. Alabama leading 6-0 timeout. John Warren just had his longest punt of the day, and you can see it jacked up his average better than 45 yards per kick. Bill Bates, free safety, was injured on kick coverage, and he is being assisted off the field. Losing him will be a serious loss. 
At halftime, highlights of Ohio State, Indiana, Fireman's Fun flashback with Bill Fleming. We'll have a uh, conversation with Paul Bryant. Tennessee band. First down, Alabama, their own 41-yard line. Coley is the quarterback, turns it inside to Billy Jackson, and Jackson is close to the 45. There's halftime. What a great band they have here. Just terrific. It's incredible that you could find a stadium this size so full in a relatively remote location. There's no big city in, in proximity, but a lot of smaller communities, and they do turn out in big orange country. Here comes Coley. Finally caught by Spradlin and dragged down at the Tennessee 33. 21-yard pickup by Ken Coley. Watch him reverse pivot, fake to the fullback, come down the line. On the option, he just outruns number 89, Mike Castile, the left defensive end. You can see him run away from him. He's got good speed. Finally brought down here by number 50, Danny Spradlin. Third, let's see, 34-yard line, call it. Holy caught behind the line of scrimmage by Charles Morgan. He's Hey, he's having an afternoon, isn't he? Freshman, 6'2 and a half, 225. Here he comes, number 83. Closes down to the inside on the true option. He fakes the ball to Jackson. And of course, he's taken right there by Morgan. It's about three or four big plays for him this afternoon. Four of them. The ball is put back at the 38. It is second down and 14. Mark Nix is in, replacing Ogilvy in the backfield. Coley stays in at quarterback. We've not seen Alan Gray as yet. We have seen Walter Lewis throw a pass completed. Almost fumbled that ball. Nix has it. Halfback pass. He's got Jackson. Jackson's got the ball. He's out of bounds at the Tennessee 13. Clark Duncan knocked him out. Clark Duncan <laughs> in relief of Bill Bates, who was injured. There it is. A new twist off of it. Comes down the line and deals it off like it's going to be an option play. And what does he do with it? Mark Nix drops the ball off to Jackson, who went in motion, and he is wide open down the sideline. Another one of Bryant's little ga gadgets, and little gimmicks, and there they are down to the 12 and a half yard line. First down for the tie. The ball is just outside the 12. Coley drops it, picks it up, and then goes punch. That's the second one, isn't it? Uh, on an exchange call. As a matter of fact, he's dropped it two of the last three exchanges and not handled it well. I don't know whether he's pulling away from there or uh, hard to tell. Coley stays. Bendross leaves. Marks comes in at wide receiver. Second down from the 12. Coley, the quarterback, runs to the eight before he is brought down. The picture you saw a moment ago from the Goodyear Blimp Enterprise out of Pompano Beach, Florida. The pilot captain is Mike Fitzpatrick from Newport, Rhode Island. Hey, Burr, he's seen a few third down and short and long. He'd like to get one in here, I know. Ben Ross comes back, goes wide to the right. Third down from the eight-yard line. They can get a first down if they can get inside the two. And it's yeah. touchdown, Coley! So Ken Coley comes into the game, ranked number three in the quarterback core, and suddenly he's the man who turns the fire on as he takes it outside and slammed it in. Well, he's using, he's used three quarterbacks during the course of the year, but it seems the team has moved with going just for about two. anybody in there. They've run the ball. Jacob's in, going for two. Simon in motion. Jacob's rolls it out. Loops it back the other way to Major Ogilvy. The two-point play works, and Alabama leads 14 to nothing. Two minutes and 45 seconds to play in the first half. 
I'll tell you, there. We look at this two-point play. Ogilvy fakes to the right, and then he breaks clear off to the left, and the guy that's supposed to cover him loses him. Two points for them. We'll be right back. The boats walk up in, take their seats, sit down and watch good football. And we're ready for Alabama's kickoff. Tim Clark, a junior out of Noonan, Georgia, ready to hit it. And the deep man for Tennessee is really Golf. came across the ball and kicked it out of bounds. So that'll cost them five. They'll kick it from the 35. Alabama comes into this ball game with the longest win streak in the country. They've won 26 in a row. The last team to beat them was in September 1978 when Charles White had his big night in USC. Beat them by 10 at Legion Field, which resulted in the touchdown. Uh, four kick pops it up in the air very short Tennessee gets it on the 19 yard line Terry Daniels one of the up men and the starting tailback and Daniels runs it back to about the 28 the muscle factories getting together on Monday night at 9 Eastern time first down for the balls just short of the 28 Olszewski in hands it off on a delay and James Berry goes down in the arms of Byron Bragg Boy, they have no chance. The defensive line is getting penetration. I'll tell you, Alabama's looked sensational in this first half. That probably takes them back to negative yardage almost, I think. I told Warren, I saw him before the ball game. He's 6'6", 270. He's a great kid. I told him, you're too big. You're illegal. <laughs> he's bouncing around, said, if you watch me, I'm going to have a big day. <laughs> so far, he's having one. Second down and about 15. Oshevsky down the line, goes outside with it to Daniels, and Daniels goes to the 30, and goes down in the arms of Mike Pitts, number 81. Well, that's one thing that Alabama should be well-skilled at defensing, and that's the option play, which Tennessee attempted to run. Did pick up some yardage on it, but uh, Alabama's looking at option plays from their own offense during the course of their every practice that they have. Just over the 30 for the balls. And it's third down and eight. Oshetsky straight back. Can't do it. Jackie Klein, 98, Braggs, 47. Those two big horses come in 166 and 165. And it's like having two trees fall on you back at the 20 yard line. I tell you, they look good. Mm. I know there's still a half to play, but. Tennessee era in the first half, minus two. <laughs> How discouraging can that be? Warren's kick is away. It's a low spinner. Goes to Ricky Tucker. Fair catch at the 37 of Alabama. He's using an assortment of people in an assortment of position. That's the third person he used back there to receive a punt. Herman's fun flashback highlights of that. Nebraska rolling in the fourth quarter. Pittsburgh a big winner today with Rick Trocano coming from his safety spot and Penn State beat Syracuse by 17. All right, they break the ball and put Ogilvy in motion. Jacobs is a quarterback and he gives the ball off on the delay to Joe Jones and Joe has a first down up at midfield. Good call, draw play in there, Tennessee anticipating pass. Figuring they're going to try to get down in there for either a field goal and... Uh, then very well executed draw. <laughs> Rutgers had played the Dickens out of Alabama last oh, week. That is a surprise. Maybe a winner today. First down, just over midfield. Jacobs looking for the pass, gets it off. The pass is caught. Outside it goes. It is uh, Vendross lateraling to Simon. And it worked. 20 yards. We talked about the unpredictability of Bear Bryant always coming up with something different, a gadget. Here is another one, the old flea flicker. Comes down the line, hits a split end to the inside, and then he deals it off. We saw a touchdown scored in the Michigan State-Illinois game. Illinois used that pass just before, or Michigan State did, just before the end of the half and scored. 29 seconds to play as the clock stops with the ball carrier going out of bounds. And the football setting just inside the 30 of Tennessee. Ben Dross and Marks now. Double wide. Jacobs back to throw. Gets it off. Ben Dross can't get to it. 24 seconds to play. Second down and 10 coming up. They don't have any more timeouts left either. Alabama doesn't. 
Brown getting a win today in the Ivy over Cornell and Dartmouth banged Harvard around. That's Harvard's first loss on the season. Joe Yukika beating Joe Restick in that one. Yale a winner today. Carmen Cosa's Bulldogs rolling along. Lafayette beating Penn. Go back and read the history of football and you'll find those two names very prominent, won't you? Lafayette and Penn. Just inside the 30, second down and 10. There's some movement on the Alabama line. Jacobs, the quarterback, made the movement, causing the center to move, and then Tennessee stepped in. Here's Pete Williams, the referee. Got illegal procedure against a white team. The interior linemen all move before the snap. That makes it kind of tough when the center forgets a snap count, doesn't it? <laughs> yes, <laughs> tend to complicate things. Ball is back at the 34. Second down, 14. And uh, close to 15. Jacobs. Delivers for Clout. Bart catches. Rolls out of bounds. They'll give him the catch at the 23. And now you have 20 seconds to play in the first half. Can't afford to get caught in the field of play because they are without timeouts. And they're running the sideline patterns. Third down. A short four, Jacob straight back. Pass is overthrown, out of bounds. Keith Martz didn't have the ball in sight really until he had gone beyond the field of play, and so it'll bring up the fourth down. And here's a look at it. A bit uncoordinated here, you see. He is out of bounds before the ball gets there. The ball should have been thrown much sooner, or he should have run a little different route. Look here. Doesn't make any difference. He's three or four yards. The ball's thrown clear out of bounds. 41-yard kick by Peter Kim, trying to make it 17-0. He's hit a 47-yarder. His kick is up. Plenty of leg. His kick is good. With 10 seconds to play in the first half, Alabama builds its lead to 17 to nothing. And Iowa State, Kansas have a pretty good scrap going with the Cyclones undefeated so far this season. Florida now trying to right their ship some with a 12-3 lead over Ole Miss. Having their quarterback Hugo get hurt certainly didn't help him a lot. He turned out to be quite a force in the first three big wins for them. Oklahoma rolling along against Kansas State. Houston SMU no score. SMU had a big lead 21 zip over Baylor last week. Bears are leading at halftime big over A&M and Baylor came back to win the ball game. Oregon State 6-3 over California out on the West Coast. The kickoff by Joe Jones and Joe bounces it downfield and gets it past Galt. Galt's got to go into the end zone and cover it. And so Willie is still looking for his first opportunity to run the ball back. And Joe Jones, now Tim Clark is the man who... I think so, yeah. Six, six times the Tennessee's yet to return. Alatori is in at quarterback. Goes deep. Going to be picked off, and it is. Intercepted by Alabama's Jeremiah Castile. And now look out. He's got some daylight. He's got some friendly folks around him at the 45, up to the 46. Time has expired in the first half. And so Alabama is completely dominant in the first half against Tennessee. And they go to the locker room with a tide leading 17 to nothing. And he Willie Galt going deep, you saw, number 26, to accept the kickoff. Tim Clark will hit it for Alabama. You saw, number 26, to accept the kickoff. Tim Clark will hit it for Alabama. The tide moves around, and here it is. The second half is underway with Alabama leading 17 to nothing. It's in the end zone. Galt's going to come with it this time. He gets it out to the 16 before Jeremiah Castile brings him down. Oshevsky opens the second half at quarterback with Daniels and Berry, Hancock and Miller, the white people. They're out of a split formation, and they hand it off to the right side running back, James Berry, number 34, and he gets a couple of yards. The offensive front for Tennessee, which has not done much today, Alabama's played them off to a standstill, Williams, Marin, North, Wilson, Irwin, and Harper. Well, that stuff is really coming down. Give him two. Tennessee is now dead even. Zero yardage in the ball game. Quarterback Oshevsky goes outside with it to Terry Daniels, and Daniels is across the corner to the 21. 
The Alabama defense now, it's Barry, not Daniels. It's Gary De Niro, the defensive left in, with Byron Braggs, who had a very big first half, the big tackle. Warren Lyles, the nose guard. Jackie Klein, the sophomore tackle. Three big fellas in the middle. And E.J. Jr., the defensive right in. Back they go now to the I formation with Oshesky on a roll. He's got a little bit of room out there. And Thomas Boyd runs him down, the linebacker, number 90. He's 6'3", 212 from Huntsville, Alabama. And when it looked like the quarterback was going to turn it upfield and go for some big yardage, Boyd was able to get to him, and you see the ball and the yardage marker there. They're yet to get one. First down. So he comes up about a half a yard short. Maybe not quite that much on the quarterback carry. Randy Scott, senior out of Decatur, Georgia, number 50 linebacker, and Thomas Boyd, who just made that play for Alabama, the other linebacker. Secondary is Mike Clements at corner. Jeremiah Castile, the young sophomore, who's such a good one. Tommy Wilcox, who played as a freshman, started, and Ricky Tucker, who is now a senior. And it is Major Ogilvy back to accept the punt from John Warren on fourth down and a foot deep in their own territory. The rain still falling straight down very heavily. And here's the snap on the money for Warren's kick. He hits it up into the heavy rain. Ogilvy drifts under it, watches it, bobbles it. Look out. Ogilvy controls it at the, ten at the Alabama 27-yard line with the roll turned out to be a 49-yard punt. So to cover. Jacobs to Jackson from the 27 to the 31, four yards. The Tennessee defensive front, Mike Castile, young sophomore from Maryville. Chris Wampler, the big tackle, he played very well in the first half. There's Jimmy Noonan, who also played well in the first half. Brad White came from Idaho Falls, Idaho, and Charles Morgan, who had four big plays defensively in the first half. At the 31, second down and six for Alabama. Tied lead 17 to nothing. Joe Jones, power sweep to the right, and he moves it out to about the 34 for three more. The Tennessee linebackers are Danny Spradlin, very fast. Number 50, Chris Bolton, out of Atlanta, a senior. The secondary, Wilbert Jones from Brownsville. Danny Martin from McMinnville. Greg Gaines out of Nashville. And Bill Bates, who was hurt in the first half, but has come back to play here in the second half from Knoxville. Third and three. Jacob still got it. Lunges for the yard marker. He's close to it. The yardage now for Tennessee, they have plus four. Getting over the zero or minus <laughs> number just starting in that last possession of the second half. Alabama now has 166 yards on the ground. I can't recall any game. It's been incredible. You see that the... Move by Jacobs was good for the first down. Take a look at those. 12 first downs to none. 153 yards rushing to minus two. Yards 235 to minus two. And possession went along with it. Fantastic. First down, it's Joe Jones, number 24. And number 77's got him. Wampler, he got a couple of yards. You can see the field now starting to get a little shiny. And there's the very glum Tennessee face. Well, it was. Well, it was a masterful, you know, first half, and now, of course, with the rain and the only chance that I think Tennessee has of getting back in this is for this rain to stop and try to generate some kind of a passing attack. Second down and eight. The football is at the 39 of Alabama. Fullback Billy Jackson. He's got the 42, three yards, Spradlin, prime tackler, score today in game number four of the 1980 World Series. Leonard beats Christensen, Aikens. <laughs> Willie Mays is really popping it. 5-3. KC, even it up with Notre Dame winning big today. Georgia won big today. Walker had a terrific day. Got 283 yards, just three yards short of the NCAA record set by Amos Lawrence for a freshman. Third down and five. Jacobs, outside, Ogilvy. 
Good strong run by Major. Down to the Tennessee, 43, picked up 15 yards. Nebraska rolled it along, didn't they? Beat the Cowboys handily, and Pittsburgh, Trocano went back from safety to his quarterback position and had a super day to lead the Panthers. Penn State beating Syracuse 24 to 7, and the Duke Blue Devils won their first of the year, upsetting Clemson by 17. Chuck Howard is delighted about that. 45-20 Purdue today. First and 10 for Bama, the fullback Jackson, he cuts it back the other way, gets inside the 40 to the 39, he's got four more. Oregon, Kevin Lusk, I think, playing at quarterback out there this week for Oregon, which has been an up and down football team. They clobbered Michigan State, then turned around and got beat. They're giving SC all they want. Maryland a one point victory for that. And Auburn three points over Georgia Tech. Charlie Williams is now in at fullback for Alabama. Joe Jones, and Joe's to the 36, close to the 35. They've got to go just inside the 34 for the first down. Alabama in this running game today, nine different ball carriers, and Iowa State loses for the first time this season as Kansas Jayhawks beat them 28 to 17. Michigan State losing to Wisconsin today. Third and two from the 36 of Tennessee. Charlie Williams stuck his helmet in the crowd. Florida beat Ole Miss 15 to 3 today. And Oklahoma whipping up on K-State. Missouri beating up on poor Colorado. Houston has finally gotten a lead over SMU 3-0 at halftime. You know, last uh, Saturday night era, uh, they kicked off in the Astrodome after the oh, baseball yeah. game. Houston and uh, Texas A&M at 11:32. <laughs> I read about that. Miami of Florida lost to Notre Dame last week, getting hammered by Mississippi State in second quarter, 21 to 10. Little movement, another gimmick, but they go right back into the same old wishbone, and the only thing it did was it cost them on fourth down and one. They had gone into front formation, come back into the wishbone. See four field position. Five flags, 25 yards on Alabama. kick spins it sort of a dying quail but they can't handle it slides on through the end zone and it'll be Tennessee's ball first down at the 20 yard line it's a 40 yard punt and only the second punt of the ball game by Alabama 7.42 to go in the third quarter today and the ball goes off to the tailback Daniels Daniels gets outside and then he is cut down by number 18 Ricky Tucker at the 27. Look for a moment, he might get outside. He read it to the outside, uh, it was designed inside, and I think that's their longest gainer from the line of scrimmage. Still not a first down. Balls have 10 yards total in the ball game. 10. Oshevsky outside, and they're still short of the first down as Barry carries. Ball is marked about a foot short of the 30. Tommy Wilcox made a great play there. Warded off a blocker and came right back in and made the play. Third down and about a foot for the first first down of the ball game. If they get it, <laughs> there will be a foul. <laughs> Quarterback sneak, first down. <laughs> game for the Volunteers. A year ago in Birmingham, Tennessee jumped out to a 17 to nothing lead. Alabama came back to win 27-17. I got a feeling, though, that Tennessee's mountain is a little higher than Alabama's was a year ago. Just beyond the 30, call it the 31 for the balls. Oshevsky stands up, whips the pass over. The pass is complete to Hancock. Hancock can't get, quite get away. Number 43, Mike Clements, was tangled up over there with a blocker, but he still was able to grab a hold of Hancock's leg and trip him 
Otherwise, who knows? Luck out. That's right. Threw the ball pretty well considering the uh, field conditions and the ball has to be wet. Second down, they need a yard for a first down. So they're about to run off two in a row, I would think, here, unless they make a mistake. Ball goes to Daniels, the tailback, and he's up to the 41, and that looks like a first down. Randy Scott, linebacker, brought him down. That's two in a row. Well, we can kind of speculate and look forward to some great games coming up. This Alabama team is going to be taking on the Fighting Irish about another month or so. In Birmingham, that should be a whale of a game. It'll be November 15, but I, I think they're in for a test next week against undefeated Southern Mississippi. Yeah, Southern Mississippi, I saw them play. Oh, oh. Hancock almost had it. Tucker came along and just belted him. Just belted him. Clements was there with him, but it looked like Hancock had position on Clements to make the catch until Mr. Tucker arrived. He's been around a long time, hasn't he? Made Started some great plays. Yeah, made some great plays for you. Hancock wide to the right, second down 10. Tennessee, their own 41. What's Jim Bob Harris What's penetrating, blitz on, throws it up for grabs. Hancock is there. That's a penalty. Flag thrown against Jeremiah Castile. He reached around and shielded Hancock from the ball. Well, the thing that happens when you blitz, you've got to go man-to-man -man coverage. Castile has got him alone out here. You know, not an easy task. Hancock takes the inside. He has him beaten here. The ball is under thrown. He has to wait for the ball. And here you see, unquestionably, interference on the part of Jeremiah Castile making contact before the ball arrived. Okay, they get away with the blitz. Tennessee does, anyway. They weather it on the interference call. Alabama is burned, 27-yard penalty, and the ball is put down at the Alabama 32. They hand it off to Barry inside, and he's inside the Alabama 30. Far and away, Tennessee's deepest penetration since the early going when they picked up the fumble caused by Charles Morgan. Here's Bill Fleming. And a showdown battle today between Washington and Stanford. Washington out in front 13 to nothing on a couple of long passes from Tom Flick to Aaron Williams. So this game could have a definite bearing on who goes to the Rose Bowl. Yes, indeed. They're playing at Stanford. Second down. And a short seven. Oshevsky rolling. Penalty flag thrown in the end zone. It is intercepted. intercepted by number 81, Mike Pitts, a defensive end who had dropped back on the coverage. But let's see about the penalty. Back up field. Looked like it was a holding call. The umpire threw the flag. We'll let Pete Williams define it for you. The offensive holding against the Orange team. Tennessee turned away by the interception by Pitts. Alan Gray in a quarterback for the first time today. He's been number two most of the season. Drops the football. Tennessee's got it. Greg Gaines, strong safety. Coming up to protect on the option. Saw the ball squirt loose, jumped on it. Second Alabama turnover, and the volunteers get a break, having given up the ball on the pass interception. Watch the defensive end go back here in pass coverage to make the interception. Unbelievable. He stays right with him all the way back. Mike Pitts right there. They're in zone coverage. He was playing him man to man and they had deep zone. They can't blitz them while they go back and intercept the ball, but they'll be challenged here. Let's see what happens. But they've turned it over now. First down Tennessee at the Alabama 19. 17 nothing. Tennessee trying to get on the boards. Oshevsky down the line. Tucks his head and turns it up. Gets a yard or so. 51 and 90. Garrett De Niro and Warren Lyles. 91. Well, there's the turnovers. Alabama's had five fumbles, lost two, no interceptions. Next week, we'll begin at 12 Eastern with an NCAA doubleheader. We'll announce the teams on Monday. 
depending on what happens today across the country. Second down and eight. Outside it goes to Daniels. Daniels can't get loose. E.J. Jr. locks his legs. He falls forward to the 18. Beautiful defense. Clements blitz from the outside, the right corner man. This is E.J. Jr. the end. Clements, number 43, right at the top there. He's a right corner. He comes on in. Jr. wipes off after Clements comes off. Shadows right down the line. When the pitch is made, he's right there to make the play. Great defense. It was well-executed defense. Third down and nine from the 18. Oshevsky in trouble. Now he's going to run it. And he is rolled out of bounds, just short of the 15. It'll be fourth down. And here comes the Tennessee kicking team with Alan Duncan coming into the ball game. John Major says he's a good one. He's three for four in the field goal department. And 15 for 15 on the extra points. Longest was 55. This one will go from 32 to 1980. He hasn't tried one from this area. But in his career at this distance, he's seven out of eight. Block. Ball got loose. The holder, John Warren, couldn't put it down cleanly. You saw the kicker, Duncan, have to break his stride. And by that time, Jeremiah Castile was on top of the ball. And Tennessee has turned away again with 2.40 to go in the third quarter. Ball's wet, and it's difficult to handle. Let's see what he does here. He bobbles it momentarily. There he is, and just enough, throws the timing of the kicker off. You see, he stops, Duncan stops, then he tries to hit it, too late. Block. And Alabama's ball, first down at their own 20. <laughs> Alan Gray, the quarterback. <laughs> Ride it off to the fullback, and Charlie Williams from Bessemer owns out to the 27. Era, how in the world can you get four quarterbacks? To be that efficient? I'm not working on 14 hours a day. I'm really amazed at the uh, execution and the willingness of Coach Bryant to go ahead and play and put these youngsters in in pressure situations, regardless of where they are on the field. Two years ago, when he had Stedman Sheila, if you recall, put him in there when the ball was on the two-yard line, and he was number two behind Rutledge. So he's got a lot Eddie of confidence Patrick in didn't him. get much on that carry right now on third down coming up with a penalty oh, flag out there. Illegal pursuit. Delay if they don't get this off. Yep. Third down and five from the 27. Just got it off. Send it up the middle. Send it in there for the first down with Charlie Williams. Charlie growling because you didn't break a big one. Joey Jones goes out and then draws. The flag was accidentally dropped out of the official's pocket. No foul. No foul. That's the first time we've seen that this year. Though we did see three instances where flags were thrown, fouls called, and no penalties in the Oklahoma <laughs> Texas game last week. First down for Alabama at the 38 yard line. Second man fumbles. Tennessee's got it again. Alabama turns it over the third time. Well, Burrow's going to be upset about those turnovers, I'll tell you. Major Ogilvy never got control of it. Danny Martin fell on it, and Tennessee's in business. Alabama's dropped it six times, lost it three times. Alatore is back at quarterback for the Volunteers. The football is at the Alabama 42. Zone. They're coming off the zone. That's Barry. Draws it to the 40. It's interesting to watch the changing defenses of Alabama. They really mix them up. Unpredictable, just as I said at the top of the show. They are unpredictable. They're liable to do anything. They blitzed for a while, came off, and uh, they, made, they had several sacks, and they came back into the zone, picked the ball off. Well coached. 
Reggie Harper, the big tight end, who at one time led the team in receiving, has not seen the ball today. Just came out of the game. Alatorre's pass in the air, and it is intercepted by Tucker back at the five-yard line. And Tucker is rolled out of bounds. Upfield. They had Hancock going down the sidelines. Hancock looking for the ball did not turn back in. It looked like the quarterback was working a post pattern and the receiver wasn't there. Jacobs comes back at quarterback now for Alabama with the tide holding the ball first down at their own 28 yard line and 40 seconds to play and Johnny Majors the leaguered. Jackson the fullback and Billy is to the 30 for two that gets the clock rolling here in quarter number three Knoxville which will host the International Energy Exposition 1982 World's Fair Great Britain and the Federal Republic of Germany one of the nations just coming in to the field to take part in the exposition it's going to be a tremendous facelift for Center City, Knoxville, right down the street here from the stadium. Second down and eight. Ogilvy has it, and Major squirts out close to the 35. The quarter is over. So we've played three. And Alabama leads at 17 to nothing. We'll continue after this commercial medal game between Alabama and Tennessee. Alabama sitting on a 17 to nothing lead. Third down and five. The ball is just outside their own 33. 17 nothing. Tied leading, and despite dropping the ball six times, they've dominated the game, and Major Ogilvy has squirted to the outside, slid off the would-be tackler, and picked up another first down. Ogilvy, you see the third quarter, at the end of the third quarter stats, Tennessee did pick up a little bit because they were in a negative position at the end of the half, but still the dominance and superiority of Alabama in this game is well demonstrated here. 300 yards for Alabama, 37 for Tennessee. Everything is, it's been an outstanding three quarters for the University of Alabama. First down at the 44. That's Joe Jones to the 49 of Tennessee. ABC's NFL Monday Night Football, the Pittsburgh Steelers can't be too happy with their loss of a point last week go against the tough Oakland Raiders from out of the west at 9 Eastern time. It's a very big ball game for both Pittsburgh and Oakland at this juncture of the season. We'll have it for you here on ABC at 9. Joe Robbins is now in at center for Alabama, number 61. It's Joe Jones from the 49 down near the 46, and the tackle by Wampler, Chris Wampler. Well, we Alabama gotta, sitting on the ball and controlling the tempo of this game. Keith, we got to remember, too, that this Tennessee team played Georgia to a 16-15 game, lost by one point, of course. And the Southern California, who they had tied, Southern Cal had to kick a field goal in the last few seconds, so they have played a couple of tough ball clubs that are undefeated, and uh, which all the more indicates how strong this Alabama team is. Major Ogilvy with it. Nothing fancy. Just... Following his blockers, waiting a little bit, being patient, and picking up about eight yards. Here's Bill. I think one of the big surprises today, Keith, was the game played at Clemson when previously un uh, winless Duke went down there and won 34 to 17. At the half, Clemson was ahead 17 to 10, but then the Duke quarterback, Ben Bennett, went to work, passed for one touchdown, was on the receiving end of a pass for another one, and then they added an 83-yard interception return by Dennis Tabron, and they won it. First time they've won this season. Billy Jackson, the fullback, finds a gaping hole over the left side and thunders through it. And Alabama has another first down at the Tennessee 26. And I would suspect, Eric, the Tennessee defense are getting a little tired now because they've been on the field all day long. Now let's give a little plus also to the Alabama offensive line. You've got to remember, that was the biggest chore of rebuilding. He graduated almost everyone from a year ago, and uh, I think they've done a great job. At the Tennessee 26, first down tied. Oh, 
will be. Well, you know, you take the two offensive line, the left tackle, Joe Beasley, number 70, and Bob Kayavak, the right tackle, both played defense last year. They were switched over to offense, and uh, I think it's a sign of great coaching. Second down and two as the major picked up eight. Charles Morgan, number 83, returning to the ball game for Tennessee. Reggie White coming out. Jacobs outside. Joe Jones, six yard line. You see how they handle that ball, a wet ball, and they still pitch it out and execute that wishbone, the classic wishbone, and they still are able to execute it. That ball is slippery, wet, the field is wet. He makes his fake to the inside, comes down, forced to pitch it off, perfect pitch, fielded well, good lead block, and you're looking at the, the wishbone, and, uh, and it's as weird. Jackson 57 yards, Jones 53 yards, Ogilvy 63 yards, Jacobs 58 yards on the ground for Alabama. First and goal to go. Jackson up the middle, inside the five to the four. Got a couple. You see the time ticking away. Georgia won big today. Bulldogs undefeated. They stay undefeated. Alabama stays undefeated. Georgia will go to the Sugar Bowl. Alabama and Georgia do not play. From the four, send the big fullback leaping to about the two. Tennessee hangs tough down in there when they get inside that 10 yard line. They just don't give it easy. Rain is again falling straight down. Very dark, heavy gray clouds. One of the things that impressed me was Charlie Daniels with all that expensive audio equipment right out there in the middle of a rainstorm having a time. All that electric gear, too. Yeah. <laughs> Third down and goal from outside the two. Jacob got him. It is Jeffers, number 47, a linebacker who trailed him all the way and brought him down at the line of scrimmage on the two-yard line. It's fourth and goal to go. Put points on the board. Here comes Peter Kim. Nope, not yet. Yep, there he is, three. Two is Umphrey, the punter. Here's the young man from Honolulu going for his fourth field goal of the day. Penalty flags it down, his kick is up. It might have taken too much time. Peter Kim is successful. There have been several players who have kicked three in a single game, but no one at Alabama has ever kicked four. Kim's kick sailed. Good. So Peter Kim is in the Alabama record book with four field goals in this game as he hits a 24-yarder, and Alabama leads Tennessee 20 to nothing. Hanging in in a deluge. Willie Galt is the deep man for Tennessee, and Tim Clark hits it for Alabama. It's a knuckleball, and it's over Galt's head and through the end zone, so Tennessee still hasn't had a chance to return a kick. Looking for their third straight national championship, and no team has ever won three of those in a row. Oshevsky straight back. Pass is slapped down by number 47, Byron Bragg. I think that's the impressive thing. If he could pull off the third national championship in a row, which no one has ever done before because of the difficulty of it, I think it would be an incredible feat. Of course, breaking all the records, Stagg's record, Warner's record, if that comes to be next year, are, are great achievements, but also the third national championship in a row, in my mind, is outstanding. Second down and 10 from the 20. Oshevsky held the ball, breaks it out, and gets loose to the 32-yard line. First down. E.J. Jr. brought him down. He froze it for a moment. And then all of a sudden, at the flow of the play, Alabama's pursuit was going the wrong way, and Oshevsky took advantage of it. He gained 12 yards. That is the longest single run of the day for Tennessee. 
Not a plan when the scramble here. Well, there is a place for improvisation. <laughs> the throw. Junior's after him and EJ's got him. He was looking deep and there was nobody to throw to. EJ Junior, number 39 here. They had a great career at the University of Alabama. Many big plays. Here he is coming in to rush the passer. Goes right through the blocker here. I mean, he is really coming on him. Pushes him right back into the passer. Comes off of it and makes the play. Yeah, he's some kind of player. Ball's back on the 24. Oshevsky back to throw it. Gets it off over the middle. The pass is complete to Hancock. Hancock back to the original line of scrimmage, the 32. You know what I'm impressed with, uh, Keith? As hard as it's raining here, field is uh, pretty well inundated right now. They have good footing on this surface. They do. We haven't seen all the slipping around. The, the ball has been difficult to handle because obviously it's slippery. But I've been impressed with the footing. It is now third and ten from the 32. Uh -oh. Junior's after him. He dumps it off. Pass incomplete. E.J. Junior. Nobody touched him, and he came firing. And Oshevsky went down, and Tennessee's got to kick it. <laughs> He's intimidating when he comes in here. <laughs> He's got to get rid of it in a hurry. He does. He sees Junior coming, and Olszewski says, wait a minute, i got to get rid of this ball. Warren is in to punt. 45-plus average on six kicks today. Look at the rain. The field is now just absolutely covered in water. Still a good kick. Major Ogilvy backs up on it. Picks it up. Turns it to the other way and gets some running room. And brings it all the way back to the 44-yard line. <laughs> like it's an absolutely dry field. 28-yard <laughs> return by Major Ogilvy. Timeout, 7.34 to play in the game. Have a look at that return by Major Ogilvy. What a career he's had at Alabama. Senior. See him putting some moves on. Makes a miss. He gets a wall down here. Apparently there was a clip down there, though. Excellent return under the conditions. 28 yards called back because of the clip. The football is put back just outside the 11. And Alabama has the ball with rain still pounding down. The tide's been flagged seven times for 63 yards in the ball game. Tennessee twice for 10. 7.34 to play. mistake down here. The volunteers could jump it. Possibly get a quick one. Got to try to hold on to it. Just outside the 11. Jacobs turns and gives to Billy Jackson. And Billy's up to about the 14 for a pickup of three. College Football 80 with Bill Fleming tomorrow offers highlights from those games you see there. A couple of them were a bit surprising. Ohio State, Indiana was a pretty good contest. North Carolina, undefeated team in the country. They're heading to Norman, Oklahoma pretty soon for a big ball game in their schedule. Second down and seven from the 14. And Joe Jones is ridden down right about the line of scrimmage. Southern California in the third quarter, only 7-0 over Oregon at Eugene. Notre Dame won big today to continue undefeated. Georgia continues undefeated. North Carolina continues undefeated. Ohio State lost once, one by 10 today over Indiana. Woody Humphrey is in to kick now for Alabama on third down. And time is called by Tennessee. All right, we'll pick it up with 6.30 to play in the game, and Alabama will punt on third down, deep in their own end of the field under very heavy conditions. Humphrey on his third punt of the day. Low snap, heats on, gets it off. Pretty good kick. Golf. 
great speed, but he just simply doesn't have any help. Nobody around him but white shirts, and he's brought down, and it's beginning to glare so much with the lights off of the wet field, it's hard to pick up exactly where he is. It looks like he's about the 48. That was a 41-yard punt. There are other scores as the finals have come in now. Penn State winning again, and one of the bigger upsets of the day reflected there. And another upset with Iowa State losing its first. Steve Alatori is in at quarterback now for Tennessee. And from the 48, gets the pass off, complete the Hancock. And Anthony takes it down to the Alabama 32. Amazing the, the footwork he's able to use in there. Hancock came down, made a spinner to the inside. Alatori hit him. He broke a tackle. Number 18, Ricky Tucker comes in and saves it. Volunteers first down, Alabama 32. With six minutes to play in the ball game. Alatori has a little time this time, goes to the outside, trying to out one Bragg, he can't do it. Byron lassoes him as he crosses the 30. Give him to the 28 on the carry. Second down, six coming with Virginia Tech winning big over Virginia today and Wisconsin beating Michigan State. Iowa got a win in the Big Ten. Florida gets a win in the Southeastern Conference. And Oklahoma gets a win in the Big Eight Conference over K-State. Alatori keeps it. No place to go as Warren Lyle is sitting on top of him and then helps him up. Houston out to a 10-point lead over SMU in the fourth quarter. Houston's down to its third quarterback. They lost Elston, they lost Chin, both with broken bones. They're now using a third freshman at quarterback. We've got a timeout here in Knoxville, and tears have just been locked by the Alabama defense. Third down for the balls. They need seven. They've gained 73 total yards in the ball game so far. Alatori is in trouble, and he's down. Number 50, Randy Scott, linebacker, was dogging him all the way. Well, you got to be careful when you're, you're blitzing and your man-to-man -man coverage in the secondary, and you got to cover a guy like Hancock or Galt. You can slip and fall, and you get a cheap score, but everybody kept their feet well, had their coverage well, and they got through the offensive blockers and sacked. All the way back to the 39. They need 16 for the first down. Alatori trying to find some time to pass. Having trouble surviving. I'm not sure that he did. He ran into Randy Scott. Number 91, Lyles was after him. Chased him right into Scott. Baylor. Ooh-wee. Bears really took off today, didn't they? They're a pretty good ball club. Gotcha. Baylor-Texas sure. game might be for the Southwest Conference Championship. Of course, Baylor does have to play uh, Arkansas before then. Miami has come back. They were down by 10. They've come back to tie, and Washington-Stanford got a little offensive show going on out west. Don Jacobs is the quarterback now as Alabama takes over the ball. First down at their own 37. And with 4.15 to play, and now it's up to the Tide. Just don't make any mistakes and grind it out. And there's the upset. You can that's, see what the Rutgers game against Alabama took out of them last week. Yep, that's right. Ivy League scores there coming in. as Coach Anderson's getting things turned around apparently a little bit with the Brown Bears. Second down and eight from the 40 for Alabama. The senior backfield all in there as Ogilvy sticks his head in the line and gets belted right at the 40-yard line by Jim Noonan. Noonan has been very quiet since the first quarter. We've heard almost nothing of him since the first quarter. There's a profile. I think they're anxious to preserve the shutout. I think that uh, it's very difficult to get shutouts today, modern-day football. Well, you heard what Paul said when after that 59-35 ball game at Ole Miss. I mean, sure, Ole Miss scored 35 points, but Alabama had 59, and Brad said when they left town, we're leaving a shame. <laughs> Jacobs is sacked behind the line of scrimmage back at the 36, and 
It's going to bring up a fourth down and a punting down for Alabama. The most valuable player. Let's go back to the story of Jimmy Noonan. He was very much a factor in the first quarter. Heard very little from him since then. Reason why Steve Mott, Alabama center. And for Tennessee, Charles Morgan, the defensive end. The kick is away. And it is fielded. Willie Galt looking for a little help, doesn't find it. He's dropped back on the 23 and a penalty flag on the field. The respective universities will receive $1,000 each from Chevrolet in the name of the two players, Steve Mott of Alabama and Charles Morgan of Tennessee for their general scholarship fund. Here's Pete Williams, the referee. We have a clip against the orange team during the run back to be half the distance penalty to the goal. Tennessee 65, Alabama 19 first downs, Tennessee 4. Alatorre's got it, has protection, throws an interception. Number 43, Mike Clements, and he caught it and was pushed out at the 20. No, there is no run back, but Alatorre tried to force it, and Clements just stepped in front of the receiver and picked it off. A beautiful game plan. Fifth turnover and fourth interception by Tennessee. I tell you, I, I've never seen a team, I haven't seen one as well prepared as Alabama has been for this Tennessee game. And a lot of people were talking about the fact that they hadn't played anybody yet. I'm talking about Tennessee, I'm um, Alabama rather. And Tennessee had played two undefeated teams, losing close games, so I'm impressed. Senior backfield is in Jacobs, Jackson, Ogilvy, Jones. And the handoff is in the middle to Major. And he is wrapped up right along the line of scrimmage. The Prudential College School Board with Chris Schenkel and Dave Diles to highlight, run down all of the scores from around the country just as soon as our ball game is concluded. World Series today, Kansas City back in it now with a 5-3 win over the Phillies. Just inside the 20. Second down. In the middle, Noonan. Tennessee now four flags, 27 yards, Alabama seven for 63. The football is put down just inside the 15. Jackson and Billy Jackson goes to the Tennessee seven the better part of eight yards on that carry it'll be a first and goal for Alabama they now have 20 first downs and he ran it behind Vince Cowell senior from Snellville Georgia the right guard Jackson, 18 carries, 77 yards, and we have less than a minute to play in the ball game. Well, we talked to Bear about comparing his teams earlier, and he didn't want to do so, but on today's showing, and this is the first time I've seen him this year, they are impressive, and I know Bear is going to feel the same way after this ball game, but he'll, he'll say, oh, you didn't get it in down in there, and we had to kick some field goals. We'll have to go down and look at a goal line attack. <laughs> Timeout called by Alabama with 38 seconds to play in the game. Alabama trying to stuff at the end zone one more time. Major Ogilvy dives and he's short. No, they call touchdown. They get it to him. He apparently hit on the plane and came down backwards, but he's got the touchdown. It was close. I think he called it back. I there, think he did, too. Reversing his decision. Yeah, the two linesmen, they, their arms went up touchdown, but I didn't think he was in. I think the referee and the umpire... Uh, he was not in. Yeah, I think his back did hit on the... Uh, just short of it, right here. His feet are well in. You see his back, and then he kind of bounced in. Good call. So 33 seconds to play in the ball game. The nose of the ball just short of the goal line. 
gave it a major this time, and he's in there. Touchdown, Alabama. And he's still coming off that ball. Pound. With 28 seconds to play in the ball game, Ogilvy goes over the top. And uh, they'll be in for the extra point try with Peter Kim doing the kicking. And trying to make it 27 to nothing. It will be the 27th consecutive win for Alabama since they lost on September 23rd, 1978 to USC. It'll be the 10th straight win over Tennessee. It will surely be enough to keep him at the top of everybody's poll for another week. The skin's kick is in the air and good. And only 28 seconds. We pick up the action with Alabama kicking it off, fielded up in front by Tennessee. The Volunteers get the football first down at the 37-yard line. What has happened on the football field? Eight seconds to play. Jeff Oshevsky. Can't throw it. Down he goes. Pitts brought him down. The game is over. And Paul Bryant has won his 302nd career victory as Alabama defeats Tennessee 27 to nothing.